Number one, in a large bag of Reese's Pieces, you have 150 candies and 60 of those candies were orange. You want to estimate the population proportion of all orange Reese's. So, what's my sample proportion? My sample proportion is, well, my P hat is I had 60 orange out of 150 candies, which if you simplify that down becomes 6 fifteenths, which is 2 fifths, which is 40%. If you type that in a calculator, you'll get 0.4 or 40%. So, using our sample proportion, so I assumed it was 40%, I simulated 100 bags of Reese's Pieces with 150 candies and computed the proportion. So we did a simulation here, 100 times, where each sample had 150 candies. The simulated sampling distribution shown below. So the sampling distribution here, all of these pieces of data represent a p-hat. Each piece of data here is a p-hat. Estimate this. Estimate the center of the sampling distribution. Well, where's the balancing point? Where's the middle? Where's the center? I'd say the center, the center or the mean of that sampling distribution, the mean of all those p-hats there is about approximately 0.4. Why is it approximately 0.4? Because that's what I assumed it was. I used my sample proportion and, and created my sampling distribution from that. So, the distribution of the sample proportions, this distribution here has a mean of 0.397, which was close to about the 0.4 that we approximated it to be, and a standard deviation of 0.045. So, my, that's a measure of my spread here. State the margin of error and construct an interval containing plausible values for the true proportion of Reese's. So, big idea from the lesson today is margin of error. Our margin of error is two times the standard deviation. Your margin of error that captures the middle 95%, the middle 95% of the data is approximately two times the standard deviation. So my margin of error is 0.09. So to construct my confidence interval, to construct my confidence interval, I'm going to do the mean plus or minus two standard deviations, or plus or minus my margin of error. To construct a 95% confidence interval, we take the mean, we add on two standard deviations, we subtract two standard deviations. So if I do 0.397 minus 0.09, my lower bound is 0.307, and my upper bound, so 0.397 plus 0.09, is 0.487. So this interval here this interval from 0.307 to 0.487, so from 30.7% to 48.7%, is our 95% confidence interval that contains the plausible values for the true proportion. So what we say here is we're 95% confident that the true proportion of orange Reese's pieces is between 30.7% and 48.7%. So let's write that down, let's write that down. We are 95% confident that the true proportion of orange Reese's Pieces is between 30.7% and 48.7%. That's my 95% confidence interval. I took my margin of error, which is two standard deviations, added it onto that mean of the distribution, and subtracted it from the mean of the distribution. So mark this interval on the simulated dot, uh, dot plot. So let's do that. So we're going down to 30.307. So we're going down to 0 0.307, which is just about here and up to 48.7, 48.7. So this interval here represents the plausible values for my true um, population proportion. Those are the plausible values for my true population proportion. Determine the proportion of simulations that fall outside this interval. So how many are outside that interval? One, two, three, four. Four out of, we did this a hundred times. So there's four 
out of 100 times. So this is 4 out of 100 is 4%, which is means 96% are inside the interval. Does that support our 95% confidence level? Yeah, 96% is basically 95%. They're pretty close. So, yes, it does support it. So what, what our confidence interval does is it's going to capture about 95% of these p hats. It's going to capture about 95% of these p hats. And any number between there could have been could have been a plausible true population proportion that would produce a sample of 40%. Anything in here, anything from 0.307 to 0.487, I believe it was, any of those could have been the true population proportion that would create a sample of 0.4 that wouldn't be unusual. If any of those could have been the true population proportion that could have gave me that sample of 40%. Hershey claims that the true population proportion of orange Reese's in a large bag is 50%. Use statistical evidence to support or refute their claim. So our confidence interval, our 95% confidence interval, um, is 0.307 to 0.487. Which means which represents, not means, which represents a range of plausible or possible um, population proportions. Notice 50% does not fall in our interval. 50% does not fall in our interval. So can we support Hershey's claim or should we refute it? This refutes their claim. Our interval refutes their claim. So again, big idea here. We To create this 95% interval, which represents the possible population um, parameters, we take the mean of our sampling distribution Add on two standard deviations, subtract away two standard deviations, and that two standard deviations is called the 90, is the margin of error for a 95% confidence interval. Stevens Beverage Company is considering whether to, to produce a new brand of cola. The company will launch the product if at least 25% of the drinkers buy the product. 50 cola drinkers are randomly selected to take a blind taste test of products A and B in the new product. 9 out of 50 participants preferred the new cola to A and B. That's going to be important. 9 out of 50 preferred the new cola. So that's a sample proportion there of 9 out of 50. 9 out of 50 is 0 0.18, 0 0.18, 18 hundredths. The company then devised a simulation based on the requirement that 50% of the cola drinkers will buy the product. Each dot in the dot, uh, each dot in the graph below represents the proportion of people who preferred Stevens' new product, each with a sample size of 50. So each dot represents a p-hat for a sample size of 50, and they did this 100 times. Assume the set of data is approximately normal, and the company wants to be 95% confident. Does the sample proportion obtained from the blind taste test 9 out of 50 fall within the margin of error developed from the simulation. So our margin of error is two standard deviations. So what's my standard deviation of the sampling distribution? There it is, 0.062. So my margin of error is 2 times 0.062. Well, what's 2 times 0.062? 2 times 0.062 is 0.124. So to make my 95% confidence interval, I'm going to take the mean, 0 0.247, 0 0.247, and do plus or minus my margin of error. I go up two standard deviations and down two standard deviations. So my confidence interval is 0 0.47 minus 0 0.247 
minus 0.124, which gives me 0.123, so 12.3%. And my upper bound for my plausible population proportions is 0.247 plus 0.124, which is 3.371. So, does my p hat, does my p hat of 18% of 0.18 fall within the margin of error? Yes, 0.18 is in our 95% confidence interval. Justify, justify means do some math. There's my confidence interval. I did the mean plus or minus two standard deviations. I took the mean from the sampling distribution and did plus or minus two standard deviations. The company decides to continue developing the product even though only nine out of 50 participants preferred the brand of its cola. So they took a sample and it was only 18%. Describe how the simulation data can be used to support this decision. Describe how the simulation data can be used to used to support this decision. So, because 0.18 falls within the 95% confidence interval, it is not an unusual, it is not an unusual um, p hat, assuming that p equals 0.25, assuming, because they assumed the true population proportion was 0.25. We could also look at this another way without using that interval. We can go on the diagram and say, there's 0.18 or less. How many dots are there? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we could also say, the probability of getting a p hat that's less than or equal to 0.18 was, I forgot how many dots there were, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 16. The probability of getting a p hat of 0.18, assuming, so this is the probability of getting a p hat that's less than or equal to 0.18, is 16%, assuming the true population proportion is 0.25. This is not an unusual result. I don't need to question that 0.25 because it, there's a 16% chance of getting 18% or less for our P hat. So should they still make it? Yeah, they could continue to make it because that 18% falls in that confidence interval because that probability is bigger than 5%. Big idea, margin of error is two standard deviations. Margin of error is two times the standard deviation. And to get our 95% confidence interval, that interval that contains the plausible um, population parameters is the mean plus or minus the margin of error. The mean plus or minus two standard deviations.